here's another idea um in well everywhere they have a league of women voters in my hometown the league of women voters used to sponsor the political debates things like that and they were always saying well we're not um we're impartial politically we're not here to support one party or the other or any one candidate what we're here to support is citizen participation in the political process and whether you're a male or female isn't an issue with us either we're, we're but it was a holdover from 90 years ago when women first got the vote then somehow the league of women voters was created to help encourage women to get involved in voting i guess and then they started sponsoring things like debates and uh interviews of candidates and things like that and they were just uh, i guess originally designed to support the new participation of women in the whole voting process why it should continue to be called the league of women voters anymore i don't know i don't think anybody's questioning <laughs> i mean there's n everybody v nobody's voting anymore that doesn't that remembers a time when women didn't have the right to vote but anyhow that's what they're called the league of women voters well so that made me think maybe what kind of uh organization i would like to create might be called something like the league of conscious voters and there there's a slight difference where the league of women's voters women voters for whatever reason still acts as if their main objective is to encourage women to participate in the election process and that that the this this kind of participation is their main objective not pushing any one agenda or one political perspective but simply to push the idea of participation that seems a little bit outdated to me anyhow my my sort of group would be would not be about being uh, would be the opposite of being unbiased the uh, would be the idea of not not to be partial in saying okay well we're biased in favor of this party or that party and we're constantly pushing that as an agenda but pushing the concept that there is a difference between truth and lies there is a difference between good and bad or or you know good management and mismanagement or um genuine genuine concern and corrupt self-interest things like that that's the sort of things that uh, um the League of Conscious Voters would be intended to present to people and to try to get people to think about, to try to approach the whole election process uh, consciously and deliberately and not blindly. So I can't see how uh, absolute neutrality wouldn't fit in with my with this notion of a league of conscious voters it, it would this would definitely be a non not about the opposite of remaining neutral being in, it's the difference between being neutral and being impartial if you're impartial you can listen to let's say there's two sides to an issue you can listen to both sides and try to hear what's of value in what what each side claims and then try to reach the most rational logical sensible decision between the two based on what they've said that's being impartial but it's not being neutral because if you reach a conclusion that one side is full of shit then to sit there and say well everybody's equal and one side isn't better than the other n no that's bullshit um, if you're conscious you're going to have to realize that 
not everything is is just as good as everything else, and that there are um, there are value differences. Things, some things are of more value, inherent value than other things, and that's what consciousness is about: being aware of the difference of of the value of things and not saying oh well I have no I'm not going to form an opinion I'm going to remain neutral and um, one side is just as good as the other to me that's a new that's a neutrality uh, attitude but uh, I, I suppose neutrality is generally that I sm just about all neutrality is impartiality but not all impartiality is neutrality you can be impartial but not neutral if you're capable of reaching value decisions so that's sort of my thing and I always think of I always end up wondering more about I always end up wondering well, what's the right name for the thing? what what if I gave something the wrong name and that screwed up its chances it's like having a baby let's say you have a baby and you're trying to choose the name that they're gonna go through life with and you wonder, well, I don't want to give them the right name because you know whatever name I decide now, while they're just a little wawa baby, is going to stay with this person throughout their life, and going to it's going that's going to be the name they're going to have to go by and and call themselves and write out every time they write their name and introduce themselves, and it's going to affect. If you say if you say okay, your name is now Schmergle Block. So then you, this kid is going to have to spend the rest of their life saying, Hello, my name is Schmergleblock. And people, other kids giggling and making fun of him. And so I wonder about how, what the effects of an... On the other hand, if you name the kid Schmergleblock, that will be a unique name and that kid will grow up with a unique identity as I am Schmergleblock. And there is no other Schmergleblock. I am the only Schmergleblock. And I am unique. And I am... And who knows? So who knows then? Which is better? Which is worse? Is it more of a blessing or a curse to give them this different name? Would it, would the same Schmergleblock be better off if his name were John Smith, and then he, his name would not be an issue his whole life following him around, and his never there would never be any distraction. So we are affected by things like our names throughout our lives in ways that we can never compare because we can't say well okay let's view two alternate uh, timeline of here let's play it through two different two different ways and see how it plays out and we can compare two different parallel lifetimes if your name was John Smith in one in in one alternate universe and your name is Schmergle Block um, poopy cat, Schmergle Block Poopy Cat. You go through your life with Schmergle. Now there are some things that Schmergle Block Poopy Cat will experience unique experiences in his life that John Smith will never experience, even though they're the same. They were born the same person, and it just just little things like that can take your whole life in all all different types of directions. Because not just are you treated differently, but because you were treated differently, you end up in a different situation, and that different situation might take you to a different career path, and uh, all sorts of things. Whereas if your name is John Smith, that never comes up, and your career path is different, and nobody's ever making an issue of, oh, oh, your name is Schmergleblock Poopy Cat, because your name is merely John Smith, and so you may never meet certain people that you would have met if you were Schmergle Block Poopy Cat. On the other hand, John Smith can maybe accomplish a whole lot in his life that uh, Schmergle Block Poopy Cat will never be allowed to. Nobody will ever take him seriously. Everywhere he goes, people will think, want him to be a clown and amuse them, no matter how serious minded he is. He's, I'm most, he might be the most serious minded person you ever know, but he's got this name Schmergle Block Poopy Cat hanging around his neck his whole life. So I, I always get, I've never resolved the issue of what's in a name, whether it's f names of a person, or names of an organization, or names of the, ti the title of a book or a movie. I mean, you make a movie, it's a, it's a two-hour movie, you have all the characters, 
but you can have two alternate titles for that movie. It's the same movie, but if you release that movie as the the John Smith story, that's one thing. But if, if you call it John Smith story and say, well, John Smith in this movie was uh, a heroic blacksmith, so suppose we call it the heroic blacksmith and how people perceive that movie it's the same movie but under a different title it may well be perceived very differently if, it, if you call it the John Smith story people for, will forever think of that movie with that blacksmith that heroic blacksmith they'll think of it as the John Smith story and when they hear the words the John Smith story they'll think oh yes the John Smith story that was that heroic blacksmith what a great movie that was I remember how heroic that John Smith was and this was his story but if you call it the heroic blacksmith, then forevermore, for for decades and centuries later, people will think of that movie and they'll think, oh yes, the heroic blacksmith. I remember that story. Um, what was the name of the of that heroic blacksmith? Was John Smith, wasn't it? Yes, John Smith was the heroic blacksmith. And it, how just how does it color our percep? How do names color our perceptions of things? I don't know. It really that's not something that uh, that just my mind will swirl around for for for, for way too long because I'll never be able to decide what to call a book what to call a song what to call a record album I can never decide because I'm always wondering well what are the alternate realities and how do you how do you reach the best decision so what do you call your or your political organization or your political involvement organization would that be a good name? League of Conscious Voters? Would the Newton Reality Alliance be a good name? I don't know. But I think about these things swirl around in my mind. Around and around. The League of Conscious Voters. It's, just, it's an idea though. Voters being conscious. Even if even if the league would recognize that it's always going to be outnumbered, that uh, the political opponents are always going to squash whatever chances, squash any dreams that ever have a chance of. I mean, I've, you see, there's how many political parties, you know, come and go. Even the ones with the super fucking billionaires running them. Uh, what was his face? Ross Perot whether it's Ross Perot, Ron Paul, any of these bastards who are in and out of the Republican Party with their third-party political, their, their, their third-party, no, their third-political party type of independent or libertarian shit. You see, the Ross Perot. I don't know, maybe many of you don't even remember Ross Perot 20 years ago when uh, Clinton was running. The, and maybe even before that, maybe in 1988, I think Ross Perot was this billionaire from Texas. Of course, they're all billionaires from Texas. This Texas billionaire who was essentially a Republican, but he was coming up with his own, I think, called United We Stand Party. And, you know, all these fucking billionaire, Texas billionaire Republicans who decide to branch off into their own third party or or the libertarian party it's just disgusting to me but it can have good results if it splits the republican vote <laughs> so i should sometimes be a little bit grateful to some of these freaks ross perot ron paul all this bullshit um not that i'm any great fan of hillary clinton or Michelle Ob Obama with her Sesame Street first ladiness. I'm sick of fucking Sesame Street running the fucking White House. I'm sick of the Sesame Street sensibilities being what's running the capital of this country. C is for cookie, A is for apple, how many is five? La la la, sunny days. Look at Elmo's world. Look, it's Barack's world. It's Barack's world. Hi, everybody. It's Barack Obama. Hi. This is my goldfish, Michelle. Say hi, Michelle. 
Today we're gonna talk about voting. Yay! Vote, 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 vote. It's Barack's world. Barack's world. No, 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 no. It's Barack's world. It's Obama's world. It's Obama's world. It's Obama's world. And uh, don't don't laugh. You know, don't uh, snicker too much because uh, in case you didn't know, the voice of Elmo is a black is a black guy. <laughs> He's about 60 years old, I think, maybe 65, or at least 55. Somewhere around 55 to 65 is the voice of Elmo. He's a black guy. So if you think that it's an outrageous comparison to uh, conceive of comparing Obama. Oh, it's not that outrageous, my friends, especially with Michelle Obama being Mrs. First Lady of Sesame Street. That's what she is. She's the fucking First Lady of Sesame Street. Not the First Lady of the United States of America. The First Lady of... Not the First Lady of Pennsylvania Avenue. The First Lady of Sesame Street. Hi, everybody. Na, 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 na. It's Obama's world. Obama's world. Say hi, Taffy. Yay! The League of Conscious Voters. 